Okay, guys, good job from your rotation players to finish off that second against Vaniagu. Another Solomon Islands team coming up in the semis in the Henderson Eels. These guys look a little bit better based on table position from last season, okay? So we're going to step things up, but still should be good enough to get past them. And let's set up that much anticipated final against Auckland City to see who goes to the Club World Cup. And I think we're better than them. We should be at the Club World Cup. Let's get past the Eels so we can beat City. Everyone and welcome to episode number 50 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both the All Whites and with Kashmir Technical and Come Up Day. Got the semi final of the OFC Champions League. Hopefully, can make our way past the Henderson Eels from the Solomon Islands and then we'll take on one of Auckland City or AES Dragon in the final. But let's be honest, it'll probably be Auckland City. So, if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below. Leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated but yesterday we took on Auckland City in the Charity Cup, the preseason cup tournament here in New Zealand before playing the first league against Wanawagu in the quarterfinals of this Champions League. If you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Did pick up a very comfortable win in the first league of that quarterfinal off the back of a 3-2 win in the Charity Cup over Auckland City. Hopefully a sign of things to come if we do make our way into the final. Off the back of that, do have to play the second league of that quarterfinal with a 6-0 lead. It was pretty much already wrapped up and thankfully got the job done with a full rotation scoreline there. 2-1 goals to Michael James Gilbert. He picked up the double. They grabbed one back late, but by that stage, we were 8-0 up. Didn't really mean too much at that point. So we go through 8-1 from those quarterfinals of the OFC Champions League. And as we suspected, are taking on the Henderson Eels. That was off the back of getting past Tafia. 5-3, the second leg did end up in a one or draw. So that's how this has been set up. So it's another Solomon Islands team we take on here in the knockouts of the Oceania Champions League. These guys do look a fair bit better Dan Wanda argue based on the fact they finished 15 points above them in the Solomon Islands League last season. So it should be a tougher test for us, but still being the strongest team apparently in the New Zealand League, we should be seeing up that final against Auckland City for tomorrow's episode. And also we've won our Southern League games around that. We've played two, a 6-1 win over Otago University. Very strong performance that one. They grabbed a goal back late, but again, that was just a consolation one. And then we beat crushed at United 4-0. Now, to be fair, those guys have actually got off to a pretty poor start this season with a new manager. So good wins there, especially over crushed at United. The team still expected to be the second best in the Southern League. But in terms of the actual table, also have updated to a new version of my skin. So hopefully my face cam won't quite be in the way here of these league tables on this overall competition screen. But there you can see what's gone on so far in the Northern League going down. There is the Central League and the Southern League there right at the bottom. We are on top. Very many bays are currently in second, but Christchurch United have not picked up a win from those first three games. So those guys might not be a factor in terms of being a challenger to us in the Southern League this season, but to be fair, we should be getting through that fairly comfortably and hopefully can put ourselves into a good position in the championship phase of the National League once we do get there. But that's still a fair way away. First up, got to complete here this OFC Champions League. Am going to go with a fairly rotated team, though, for this first game of today's episode. That's because most of our first teamers come to this one on a heavy match load. So we are going to rotate for this one. Do think that hopefully they should be able to handle this one at the GMP before we do go to the Solomon Islands for that second league and maybe then can play a few more first team players, but it's pretty much a full rotation just to give our regular starters a bit of a rest off the back of those last couple of games that they have played in the Southern League off the back of that first league of that quarterfinal in yesterday's episode. But hopefully, as I said, they can still get the job done kind of like they did in that second league against Wanawagu in the quarterfinals. And we'll come back shortly and hopefully build up a good lead at home in the semifinals of the OFC Champions League. And here are the team sheets for this first leg of the OFC Champions League semi-finals. There's our team you just saw before. 
pretty much a full rotation does mean Masana is starting in that central attacking midfield role. The other Henderson Eels going with five at the back, a defensive midfielder, two just in front of that, and also two strikers. Interesting formation, but hopefully good win here at the GMP going in to that second leg. And just shot the 10 minute mark, first highlight of this game does take place, and it is a corner here in our favour. Walker takes this short to our striker. And Michael James Gilbert now to Luvi far post there for Georges Victoros who will head that one home. And it's a very good start. We take a 1-0 lead there through the former AFC Auckland Manor, of course, these days. Not that far away from qualifying to be a New Zealand citizen. So hopefully he might be a future All-Whites option. Albeit we'll see how he stacks up in terms of our centre-back depth in the country. But a great start. We take an early 1-0 lead. And only a few minutes off the back of that opening goal. Now it's a goal kick here to the Henderson Eels in the turquoise. Nice colour lad for a team called the Eels. A slight tackle there though does mean that they do get the ball. Kinney tries to make his way down that left hand side. Pumps it deep. But that one's far too long for one of the Henderson players to get onto the end of. And Stevenson plays that to Lepane. Now Paris to Masan. And we make our way into the opposition half. Walker. Makes his way nicely down that left hand side. We'll see if he squares it. He does for Tulevi. Decent chance there, but someone apparently was offside. It was Gilbert. I think that was off the back of that shot being saved. A chance for us there to make it 2 0, but shortly off the back of that, now a thrown inside of the final third. Pike it right back today. He heads that one down, and we do keep position. Gets it back again now. Back out on that right hand side, right on the edge of the box. Just takes his time here. Trying to square that one for my son. It's a double chance off the back. Of the initial save, takes a nice little touch there from the underside of the crossbar. And Adam does FM will score a goal in the knockouts of the Champions League to make it 2 0. And already, this is going quite well considering we are playing a full rotation. If we beat these guys quite badly, we might come back for a seven league game instead of that second league over in the Solomon Islands. But off to a good start 2 0, just shy of the 20 minute mark. And a little while since that last highlight did take place, about to make our way into the last 10 minutes of this first half, but we are on the ball here making our way out from the back. Hopefully can maybe grab one more goal here before the half and try and put this tie to bed nice and early. Gilbert gets the ball here just outside of the box, takes on the shot there, comes off the woodwork, but yet again, the rebound does fall very kindly to him that time off the woodwork instead of a save from the Eels goalkeeper. Pokes that one home, that makes it 3-0, and so far, this has been a very good first half, not a bad effort from a long way up, but surprisingly, actually wins the race to the rebound, not too sure there what that defender was doing, trying to head it away, not good positioning from him, and Gilbert makes it 3-0 late in the first half. And just to be about to make our way into two minutes of added time, one more highlight here in this half, it is a free kick in our favour, looking there for Stevenson or Paras at the far post, can't quite pick them out. And now a chance here for the Eels to do something on the counter-attack. But that player, I guess, must have been offside for some reason. Stop this run. That must be the reason why. Because otherwise, that's a weird animation. But we are now back in position. Dominguez plays that one across to Lepane. Forward to walk a good touch there to Tuluvi. But that's a loose one. Thankfully, a long clearance that we can get back in position off the back of. Now, Paras to Pike. And Tuluvi is back on the ball down our right-hand side. Squares that one nicely. Former Sun, good chance there for a double, but blast that one. It looked like high and wide, and that will do it for the first half so far. Very convincing the Eels up to absolutely nothing. We'll go into the second half with a 3-0 lead and a few more goals, and this time might be over before the second leg. And it hasn't taken long for the first highlight of the second half. It's a throw in here in our favor, and we do well to keep hold of the ball. I think the Walker goes down, and it is a penalty, so a chance for him here, I think, to put this one away. Indeed, it is. He's been our regular penalty taker when we have rotated the team for these games that we've been playing so far this season. That one, not the most powerful effort, but good placement to put that top left corner. And Nathan Walker makes it 4-0. And starting to get to the stage, as I said, in the first half, where we might already have a big enough advantage to not worry about the second leg of this one. Because so far, the Henderson Eels have done absolutely nothing off the back of us now taking a 4-0 lead early in the second half. Not too long. Off the back of that, there is a goal kick in our favour. So maybe a chance for us here to make it 5-0, albeit that pass for some reason. That midfielder doesn't try and keep hold of it. But thankfully, the Eels just give us the ball back. And now Walker makes his way down the left-hand side. An interesting ball there, though. And Henderson 
can now get a chance really for the first time in this game to launch a decent counter-attack. Kinney makes his way down the left-hand side, tries to cross that one, takes a big old deflection, a little bit aerial ping-pong there, and Henderson do keep hold of the ball. Howe will pick out Kinney right on the edge of the box. Nice ball forward there. Four forward near good chance. He was on side, but thankfully just puts that one wide, and we still have our 4-0 lead. And the highlights continue here just shy of the hour mark. It's a free kick here in our favour, but a poor one. And Henderson, they can control the ball yet again through Kinney. A nice ball forward there. And how actually with a chance here to do something, albeit is one on two at the moment. But now some of his teammates do move for Gagane back over there for how who is in behind. Puts that one far post, but Pike can control that. Back to Hawkins, back to Pike. We now try and make our way here out from the back. But that is a poor ball there looking for Walker. And now a chance here for the Solomon Islanders to get a goal back. Nice loop ball over the top. But Hawkins comes up with a really good save there to keep it at 4-0. Just starting to slack off here a little bit off the back of that early penalty in the second half, which Walker did put away. But Kinney with a corner. Can they score from this? We kind of deal with the danger. But now Lee not that one, is on the ball. But a poor pass there. And Adam can try and get us on the counter-attack. Albeit, he goes down with a bit of an injury, might deal with that off the back of this highlight, definitely don't want any injuries going in to the final of this competition, it's an orange one, not too bad, but we'll play things safe and take him off here for Lorenzo Johnson, but we still have a 4-0 lead with a half hour left. And we go forward to the 69 minute mark for the next highlight in this game. It is a goal kick there to the Henderson Eels, but we do win it in the air, but can only hit it forward to an opposition player. They play a ball over the top there, and one of their players has far too much pace there for our defender. Almost looked like there he kind of teleported through them, but they put it away there through Iradio, I believe that was, and do grab a goal back to make this 4 1. So maybe this tie not quite over yet. Iradio, indeed, it was. Just gets there through Stevenson, still looks like a weird animation, but nonetheless, too much pace there for our central defender. That makes it 4-1. And as we're about to make our way into the last 15 minutes of this game, might be time for us to make some subs. We might take off these players here, not quite on a green ring. So Pedro can come on at left back. Also Fletcher and Judy Dom can come on in defensive midfield. And with our last sub, we'll give Shusha some game time in place of Walker. That'll be all our subs used with a 4-1 lead and about 15 minutes left. And nearly inside the last 10 minutes of this game, still 4-1 in front. We have a free kick here just inside of our own half. Vic Dross takes it short, gets it back, and now Pedro plays that for Tushusha, our first team combination down that left-hand side. Bit of a 1-2 between them there, and it goes back to Pedro, albeit Lee there with a challenge. Didn't look like he won the ball, but apparently this will continue. Fordney makes his way forward. The goal scorer, Iradeo, is back on the ball, starts to make his way towards the left-hand side and picks out Kenny who has been a little bit threatening so far in this game, just on the edge of the box now, squares that one for a teammate. The shot gets saved by Hawkins, but it falls there to Fordney. They make it 4-2, and maybe actually going to come back for the second leg of this one instead of a seven league game, because the Henderson Eels have come back at us late in this one, which is a bit disappointing, considering we've now brought on some first team players, maybe the rotation ones going a bit better than I was giving them credit for as we try and encourage the uh, cuts out a highlight, but we're still 4-2 in front late on. And just about to make our way into injury time in this game, just missed a highlight there, but it was an offside goal, which was scored by us. It was well offside, not much point showing you guys that one, but 4-2, which I actually think is a bit disappointing, considering we had a 4-0 lead at one stage. That's just a close enough gap, especially with the second leg being over in the Solomon Islands to make it worthy of coming back for that one, but certainly a good start to that game, the first half, and also early penalty in the second, but just slacked off off the back of that, which is understandable, but in a two-legged tie, not ideal. It's a 4-2 going in to that second leg. I think that means we'll come back shortly, recap the domestic game that we're about to play, and do a bus trip before we take on the Henderson Eels in the second leg of this Champions League semi-final. And we've gone for the week and we're about to take on the Henderson Eels here yet again in their second leg of this Champions League semi-final. Before we get stuck into the bus trip, we have played a game in the Southern League. Pretty scratchy. 2-1 win away over Otago University. Certainly was expecting a bigger win than that. But to be fair, I think most of our players do have an eye on the second leg of the Champions League semi-finals. Early goal to Al Ghazali. They grab one back just before halftime 
through Max Turner and Connor Kerwin's first goal for the club, I think that was, comes at a very good time off of the bench to make sure that we grab a win there down at the Caledonian in Dunedin. So that bit of a scratchy win, but thankfully we pick up three more points and that does mean in terms of the Southern League, we are still on top. These days, it's actually a team that got promoted from last season in the Dunedin City Royals, who are in second. And behind that, we have Ferry Me Bays as well as Nelson Suburbs, Crushers United. They have moved up the table a bit, but still haven't won a game in their first four. So maybe they're not going to be a factor, as I said earlier, in the Southern League this season so far. Looks like a bit of a Christchurch first Dunedin battle for that top spot. In the Southern League, and also we've picked up an injury going in to the second league of the semi-final. But to be fair, it's to our backup goalkeeper, so that shouldn't be too bad. Matt Ford twisted ankle out for two to four weeks. And I say a backup, he's actually the third choice off the back of us signing Anderson from Western Suburbs. So that won't impact us too badly. Adam does FM, just a tight calf in that first game. Only missed a couple of days, so he is fit for this trip to the Solomon Islands, and before we get stuck in to the second league with that 4 to advantage, time for a bus trip as we make our way to the Lawson Tama Stadium. And before we get this bus trip started, I'll be to show you exactly where the Solomon Islands are, and exactly what island we're actually on, considering the Fiji issue that we did have back in the group stage. We're flying here from New Zealand, from Christchurch, considering we're Kashmir Technical. We go up here pretty much over New Caledonia, and past Vanuatu, and then we get to the Solomon Islands, which is fairly close to Papua New Guinea. Obviously, it's the islands, so there's more than one. We are, though, on the main island. The suburb that we're going to there is Honiara. That is the location of the Henderson Hills Football Club and also the Lawson Tama Stadium, where this game is going to be played. Thankfully, some good hotels not too far away. And the one that I've picked out here is the Heritage Park Hotel, but expensive but I think it will do. Want to make sure our boys are nice and prepped here to make sure that we can make our way into the final of the OFC Champions League. We'll just get rid of all those ads. And there is what the property does look like. There you can see it. There's a bit around it in terms of, I think, a night market and some other stuff as well. So it could be some fun times. While we're there, there's a bit of a swim up bar almost there. I can make the most of that, do my prep while on the source just a little bit, but there's what it looks like. Apparently one of the better hotels and restaurants on the island. So we're gonna go there and stay, make the most of some ocean view accommodation. But we are on the island, so it does mean that yet again, no street view for this bus trip. It's gonna have to do it in a bit of terrain mode. It's not too long of a trip, only five minutes there from our hotel to the ground, about two and a half K. So we'll start to zoom in here and you can see what's around where we're staying. You've got the National Art Gallery not too far away, a cafe, looks like there, there's another good hotel and a cafe called Palm Sugar. So there's a bit there in and around where we are staying as well as the Solemn Island Visitors Bureau, which could be quite useful if I have a big night out and get myself into trouble. We go out of there, make our way onto Mendana Avenue. Go down here a bit further, go past the office for Solomon Airlines. That could be quite useful if we have any flight issues. They get changed while we are over on the island. We go past something called the Trugco Shopping Limited, which apparently is a shipping service. Don't think we'll need to use that while we're over there. We'll just go down here the road a bit further, go past the Oil Limited, go past the barber shop. That could be quite useful. And also Frangipani ice cream, top notch. That should be useful, especially with the temperatures over there. In the Solomon Islands, also go past something called the Hyundai Mall, which I'm not exactly sure if it's just a car mall or not. It sounds like it based on the name, but we'll see. We go past the pharmacy, a central market. They're the Honey Era Central Market, a food market, top notch. There can be some more food we can consume. We go past the church if any of the players want to do any of that. Then make our way around a very interesting roundabout. Looks kind of like an oval, not really a roundabout, but nonetheless, that's what it kind of looks like the system is based on that picture. And go down the Honiera Aola Road, going past Solomon Water and the Ministry of Infrastructure and Development there on the Solomon Islands. Go down here a little bit further, partially onto the Cookham Highway, and we just go down there a little bit further and across from the National Referral Hospital Laundry. 
if the hospital needs any laundry done. On the right hand side, we do have the Lawson Tama Stadium. Briefly, this does look like a fairly decent facility compared to some of the other ones we have seen over on the island. As you can see, it is the home of our opposition in the Henderson Eels, and that's where we're playing this upcoming game. We'll just see if I can find some better pictures here of the stadium. And we have got a couple of truths from stats one there from pitch side. I imagine it's a bit of a ceremony before the game, seeing as we're so properly good here at Kashmir Technical, even though we're not quite the champions of New Zealand. That's what it looks like from a bit more of an aerial view. It does look quite nice if you get up there above pitch level just a little bit. Not too sure what that photo is of, but there is a game taking place there at the Lawson Tama Stadium. And a few more pictures, not too sure which teams are playing, if it's a national team or indeed the Henderson Eels. There's a couple of fans there waiting for the big guns in Kashmir Technical to show up. There's a bit of a short bus trip there to the Solomon Islands for this game against the Henderson Eels. And hopefully we can build on that 4-2 lead and book our place in the Champions League final. And for the second league, we're a lot closer to our first choice eleven. but first up the Henderson Eels, this time going with a 4-3-3, so a big change in shape there now that they are back at home, but we're a lot closer to our first choice eleven. but Inchin Garce at centre-back and also Lepane in that deep-lying playmaker role, but those are our only two changes from our usual first choice eleven today. We are in the white and blue, being away, and with Henderson wearing yellow as the home strip, so a bit of a change of uniform for us here, but an early highlight a corner in our favour punched away out to Shusha there from the goalkeeper of the Henderson. Neil Shusha makes his way into the box. He loses possession, but then Waiter with a really poor pull there after Kinney did get that ball for him. So a poor penalty given away there and a chance for Shusha to give us an early 1-0 lead. He sends the goalkeeper the wrong way and that makes it 5 to aggregate and a good start for us here in the second league. Hopefully we can put the foot down nice and early and show these guys while we're a lot better here at Kashmir Technical, it's a good start. A penalty makes it 5-2 overall. And not too off the back of that opening penalty. And it's a throw for us, albeit down the other end of the field. So we're going to have to make our way out from the back here. Lepane across to Inchin Garce. Hopefully can set up a final, which you'd imagine will be against Auckland City. His former club hopefully gets some revenge on them for that loss we suffered in the National League Championship final at the end of last season. But eventually we start to make our way into the opposition half, but get the uh, bit of a loose touch, but thankfully, poor clearance, and Inchin Gasse can find Pedro. Now, Shusha starts to make his way down that left-hand side. Janssen kind of gets brought down there. Play will continue. Baquette squares it for Janssen, back on his feet, and he'll put that one away, bottom left corner. Bit of a lucky goal, but I did think in there we could have potentially been given yet another penalty, so we'll take that goal. That makes it 2-0, 6-2 overall. We get that four-goal advantage back, which we blew late in that first leg back at the GMP. Good first-time finish there from Lorenzo Johnson to make it 2-0 nice and early. So that's a good start for us here over in the Solomon Islands. Hopefully, we can keep scoring just in case our players do tire late. No doubt, a lot hotter, and it does get down in Christchurch here over in the Solomons. Now, highlight starts here. The Henderson Eels were on the ball. But good work there from our Brazilian left back, who to be fair, should be quite used to the heat. And now we get a chance here to launch it. Another attack Paquette starts to cut in field from that right-hand side. We eventually get the ball forward to Shusha. Now El Ghazali makes his way inside the box, takes on a shot there from a tight angle. Wasn't very likely to find the back of net, but it does come off the base of the post and goes out for a front. So a chance for us there to make it 3-0, albeit not too sure if it was that good a chance, but unfortunately can't quite put it away. Off the back of that, the Henderson Eels do get a spell here on the ball in front of their home fans. Fordney, one of the goal scorers from that first league, just plays it out there to the left-hand side. David tries to switch to play, but that not a great idea. Pedro can head that one down for Shusha. And then we start to make our way back into the opposition half. Johnson, nice ball forward there for Al Ghazali. This time he'll put it away and make it 3-0 just past the 15 minute mark. So a reasonably quick fire double for us here at Kashmir. Technical playing quite well in the blue and white. That makes it 3-0 on the day. 7 to on aggregate. Some good build up play here off the back of the Henderson Eels just being a bit loose on the ball. That switch there they tried to play 
Probably not the best idea, and Al Ghazali will pick up his first goal of the game to make it 3-0 on the day, 7 to on air. And the highlights do continue here, just shy of the 20-minute mark. Al Ghazali back on the ball, does lose out, but Shusha is there to tidy things back up for us. Now, Inchin Gasse back for to Shusha, having quite a big hand in this performance so far. Paquette picks out Elliot. He goes backwards. Did think Paquette there was making a decent run, but now Pedro... Back in there for Shusha, takes on a shot from a tight angle in the beef here. That's a rocket that gets past the goalkeeper, and it's already 4-0 in the second leg. The first team is putting the Henderson Eels to the sword just a little bit more. You could almost say that they're smoking them, but it's been a brilliant start for us here in the second leg. 4-0, just shy of the 20-minute mark, and 8-2 overall. And to be fair, not much has happened off the back of that fourth goal that we did score around the 20-minute mark. You might have seen there briefly, Auckland City are 4-0 up over their opposition. So it does look like we're setting up here for a rematch of that National League Championship final in the OFC Champions League. But very good first half from us there, even though it did slack off off the back of that fourth goal. But much like the first league, that's kind of understandable, especially now that we do have an 8 to advantage. No changes needed because all our players doing a decent job. And we'll get the second half underway with that 4-0 lead on the day and being 8-2 up on aggregate. And a couple of minutes into the second half, we get the first highlight here. And yet again, we are on the attack looking to add to our tally here in this away league. The Henderson Eels, no doubt, will want a consolation goal at home, but that's a poor pass. And Paquette can swear that one for El Ghazali. Big chance, but he blasts that one over the bar. And we're still 4-0 up on the day, 8-2 up on aggregate. And just coming to the hour mark here, and I think we might make our first substitution because Cullen Elliott down to a little bit of a deep yellow heart. Sean Stride does look like he's in need of the game time a little bit more than someone like Pikes. They'll be our first sub for the second leg with a 4-0 lead on the day, 8-2 on aggregate. And only a few minutes on from that first substitution, now it's a free kick in our favor, and we take this one short, usually score goals from these short free kicks. Al Ghazali with a great chance there, but that's actually a really good save from the goalkeeper to tip that one. Onto the woodwork, the Henderson Eels can clear that danger. A good chance for us there to make it 5-0, but still up by 4 and 6 overall. And just as we make our way into the last 20 minutes of this game, I think it's time for us to make a couple more substitutions. We'll take off some players here who are quite important to us at Kashmir. Technical Sotolubi can come on for our highest rated player in Paquette. And also might take off Jamie Fletcher, our captain. He's been quite good so far since coming in from the Central Coast Mariners. Pahas looks like. He's in the of the game time. There will be three of our subs used. Still up eight to an aggregate with about 15 minutes left. And we've just now went to the last 10 minutes of this game. Don't think we need to use the remainder of our subs because all the players out there are still on a decent hard and performing fairly well. But a late highlight here. And we do get the ball back here off of the Henderson Eels and start to make our way into the half. Lapane, nice ping out there to Jose Pedro who keeps it just inside, but did find Shushulia eventually makes its way in for Jansen, who gets a good chance off a ball, but that one goes into the path of the Henderson goalkeeper, but to be fair, this one's been over since the early stages of the second league, as you'd imagine, with our first choice 11, for the most part, being put out for the second league, to be fair, probably could come back for a different game than this one, but just wanted to make sure that we did get the job done and not stuff things up, and thankfully, that was the case. We back up our 4 2 win from the first leg with a 4 0 1 and go through to the Oceania Champions League final off the back of an 8 2 win over the Henderson Eels. So, a pretty comfortable win for us there in the end in that semi final of the OFC Champions League. Made it a bit interesting late in the first leg, but in the end, our first teamers finished the job off over in the Solomon Islands. As you can see, Auckland City fairly comfortably as well. They got past AES Dragon out of Tahiti, so it does mean it's the rematch that I think most people would have wanted. Auckland City versus Kashmir Technical in the final of the OFC Champions League, and that's what's coming up first up in tomorrow's episode. It's on the 13th of May, so only about two weeks off the back of this game. It is being played at the Ramon Tribulé Arena, the new stadium there for Auckland City, so it does mean another big game that we play against them that isn't at the GMP and is at the home ground there of Auckland City, but hopefully we can beat them this time and pick up the OFC Champions League, especially because there's a Club World Cup coming up later this year. This will be our only chance to potentially make our way into that, but I think that will do it 
for today's episode and then got past those Hender Snails quite comfortably and doing a good job early stages of the Southern League. If you enjoyed that one, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. No doubt tomorrow will be a lot tougher than we take on Auckland City in the final of the OFC Champions League. As I said, that is probably our only chance to get to this year's FIFA Club World Cup. Otherwise, you're going to have to win an OFC Champions League in the next couple of years and hope we can make our way to the Club World Cup in 2033 because these days it is held every four years. And also, we'll probably still do two games in that episode. Pretty tough task for us, actually, in the first round of the Chatham Cup. We're away at Western Suburbs. That's quite a tough team to take on from the Central League. So I think tomorrow, we've got a cup football off the back of that Champions League final. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.